Now, Google is obviously constantly changing the AdWords system and changing ad structures and formats and rules and all kinds of things. And one of the things you'll notice recently and more and more of is that when you search something in Google and you see ads that show up, the Google AdWords ads, like let's say these two at the top when you search for mortgage loans, you'll notice that they just don't have the typical headline link, description, and display URL anymore. Now they have other things like a phone number. You'll see like this top ad here has four additional links. This first time home buyer, refinance your loan, mortgage calculator, FHA home loans. And then you see this one under it has three of those additional links. How we rank refi lenders, the marketplace, see our top refi choice. So these are called ad extensions. And you can add ad extensions to your ads in Google AdWords for free. They don't cost you any more. There's no additional fee to use them. But if you have ad extensions enabled for an ad in an ad group, um, your ad doesn't always show up with the ad extensions. You don't know when they're going to show up. Google doesn't tell you when they do. And it depends on, I guess, the formatting or what position or other things, or if it's mobile or desktop, whatever. Sometimes it'll show four. Sometimes it may show three. Sometimes it will show none. So it's a bit of a mystery how it's going to be used and when it's going to be used and why and where, et cetera. So that alone for one, number one, is kind of a direct marketer's nightmare. We don't know when things are going to be shown nor have control over it. So it's very hard to, you know, scientifically test things the same way and how it's always going to be to no cause and effect. Well, on the second side of things, which make things even worse, and I mentioned this earlier in a lesson in this module, I hate these ad extensions because... As a direct marker, I want to control every step of the process and optimize every step of the process and have data for every step of the process. So I want to show an ad when someone searches for a specific keyword. I want to have the ad in the ad text, what the ad says that I created, what I can split test to try to improve the click rate. So the first goal there is click rate. I want to work it and try to do the best I can to up the click rate. And then after they click, I want to display the landing page to them that I want them to see. And then I want to be able to split test the landing page, make improvements, and then make the conversions go up. And then I have control of that, where my ads are shown, what they see and click on, and then where they go next, that landing page. Well, these ad extensions really mess everything up because these ad extensions are giving you links that go to other sub pages on your site. They're not just to one landing page. So if it's like your about page or an additional product page or something else. So now it's going to basically confuse all the data and your conversions because the path someone might take will now be different. They might, go, they may actually click on one of these sub pages and not your main headline, which will go to your, you know, your set landing page. If they click on one of these site links, which are one of these other little sublinks, then they go to that page specifically. So they may go from there and then they may go to your landing page, link from that page or not. So I don't like it. Most marketers don't like it because we lose control over that path. Here's the downside though. Google is trying to make these site links more and more important and make advertisers use them. For, well, they do it for one reason. They get more clicks by having more links in that same area where the one ad shows. So they want to do it because it makes them, you know, has that higher eCPM calculation like we've talked about. They make more for every page that loads. So by having all these different sublinks, they put those all together to create the overall click-through rate of that ad. And of course, that click-through rate is going to be higher because it has all those other links. And if the click-through rate's higher, you're rewarded in the AdWords system to have your ad shown more and you ultimately pay less than a competitor that has a lower click-through rate. Because as I said, click-through rate is king in AdWords. So you're really at a disadvantage if you don't use these ad extensions and these site links. So you can have different types of ad extensions. You can have a linkable call button to the phone number. You can have, uh, it can pull in reviews. If you're one of the trusted merchants in Google system, you'll see an option for an ad extension that's a review. That's why some AdWords ads you see have like a three or four star thing next to it. And then it shows the ad, uh, you know, and so you also have these site links, these, these things I'm talking about now. So there's a number of different types of ad extensions uh, that you can add. The problem with it is, like I said, it's very hard to test things because someone could click on one of these sub pages and it throws everything off. By default, 
I don't like using site extensions, uh, these ad extensions, these these other you know site links. But if you get into almost any market at all that's competitive, you're almost going to have to use them to get the cost per click low enough in order to, to be able to compete. So you may end up having to use the the uh, ad extensions and these site links in order to get your click-through rate high enough, uh, which affects your quality score. And eventually, I think Google wants everyone to use, the, use these. So this may be uh, a major headache here coming in the near future where we pretty much have to use them or we can't compete with other advertisers. And if that's the case, well, then we're going to have to try some you know, different strategies like maybe having some related landing pages in those sub-site links that are slightly different from our, you know, our goal. Like if we're trying to build opt-ins, we may show some other info about the business, but then have a miniature opt-in thing at the bottom, uh, unlike the main landing page, which will be, you know, the the main opt-in page for for that for an example of trying to build leads. So there are creative ways, of course, to solve any of these problems. But anyway, so ad extension. So let's jump back into AdWords and let me show you where these are set up. So when you go to set up a new campaign, you see all the standard settings. Well, here towards the bottom, you'll see it says ad extensions. It says you can use this optional feature to include relevant business information with your ads. And it has these three options initially here, location, site links, and call. Site links are those sub pages uh, on your website. Call is if it's to include your phone number in the ad and you can track calls with their conversion tracking. And then location is to extend your ads by showing location information. That's typically used if someone searches in Google Maps uh, for your business. And if you're a local business that services people in a certain area, uh, then it may benefit you to have that. But for most marketers, you're not going to want to have location or the call part in there because you, you don't want people calling you. Um, you'd rather them go through the process of your website to convert into an either you know an opt-in or, or to a sale. Um, so typically the only one you'd want to use would be site links. So if you enable site links, you check this and then you'd save and continue. And now I'll jump over and let me show you once you have that stuff set up where the actual ad extensions are set up. Now, when you're inside a campaign, you'll see there's a tab. It's to the left of that great dimensions thing I showed you. And it says ad extensions. You click on the tab and now it's going to show you what ad extensions that you have set up, or in this case, the site link extensions, because that's the option that's selected for this campaign, uh, in order to have those little sub page links that show in the ad. So you would just click plus extension. And then it would say, okay, select at least four site links to use with this campaign. Well, I don't have any site links set up. Site links are those sub pages. So for the website you're trying to promote with your campaign, you would go in here and you would set up the different site links uh, for those sub pages. And then however many you set up, you'd be able to pick four in this case from those site links to show for this campaign. So you could have your about page or your product listings page or any of your other pages, uh, but that's how you add ad extensions. Now I imagine in the near future, I'll add some supplemental lessons on how to take advantage of ad extensions and how to use different strategies for them, like I mentioned, because I believe moving forward with AdWords, uh, us as marketers using the system, we're going to be forced to use uh, these ad extensions. Otherwise, it's going to be hard for us to compete, you know, with all these other competitors that are starting to use them. And of course, Google rewards you if you use them because it increases your click-through rate because now they have so many links that a user can click on. And that's what we, they want. More clicks is more money for them. Uh, but I'll probably come back around and be talking more about ad extensions in the near future.